Hey, it's Ron Johnson, and this is the Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. No, do not adjust your screens. This is not a backdrop. This is real. Those are people up there on the roof. I am in sunny Extapa, Mexico, but the show must go on. Excited about today's show. Got Co'Keefe, former Tampa Bay Buccaneer. He's going to join us on the Hanging with Ron Johnson segment. Why? Well, one, Tom Brady retired. He's going to talk about that. Playing with a 42 to 44-year-old quarterback. How has that been? And is Tom done? I don't know. Coquif has something to say about that. And could the special teams of the NFL adopt what the XFL just did? We'll talk about that next on the Ron Johnson Show. Locked on Sports Minnesota Podcast. It's endless Minnesota Vikings talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. Now the Ron Johnson Show. On the field, in the broadcast booth, Ron Johnson is Minnesota sports. He's played with them, hung out with them, and grown up with all the big names in Minnesota sports. They're hanging out with Ron Johnson. It's the Ron Johnson Show on the Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast. And it starts now. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Ron Johnson's show, and I'm your host, Ron Johnson. Before Sam Ekstrom joins us, my producer, uh, we have some great guests coming up today. One mainly, Cole Keefe. He's going to join us in the Daily Three and the Hanging with Ron Johnson segment. Like I said, he has some Tom Brady stuff to talk about. Is Tom coming back? And also some of the locker room stuff he's learned from guys like Kyle Rudolph, former Vikings tight end. Did a lot for Cole Keefe in his career early on as a rookie. Didn't get a Super Bowl like Antoine Winfield, but he has learned a lot from that Tampa Bay Buccaneers locker room. So we'll talk to him. And what he's learned from rowing the boat with P.J. Fleck, what that has done for his career and how he lives that life. But before we jump into the show, I want you guys to remember, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Just visit fanduel.com backslash locked on to make every moment more. Trust me, you're going to want to get on these parlays. It's been fun. It's been fast paced. And it makes every game a little bit more exciting. And also, you can download the Locked On Sports Minnesota app on Amazon Fire and Amazon Roku. Just go to your TV, search for your apps, search Locked On Sports Minnesota. You can get all of our shows, all of our videos right there on your TV. Well, as I bring Sam into the show, Sam, I know you've seen it. I know you saw the kickoff, the XFL kickoff. We're going to start there. The XFL kickoff to me, Sam, it's something the NFL might want to adopt. One. You look at every year the NFL is moving the, the, the goalposts. They're, they're moving the kickers up. So now kickers are just kicking it through the end zone. There's no returns. Like the Kane Wangwu return against the Giants, it's less and less of that every single game. And that's one of the most exciting parts of the game. When you think about that, when you think about how do you get that back, when you think about Devin Hester, without the kickoff return, he's not a pro bowl potential player. Like, he didn't give much on offense. He didn't give much on defense. He was one of, one of the most electric punt return and kick returners in the NFL, and it doesn't help him. You look at Cordero Patterson. Without the kickoff return, he doesn't lead the NFL in kickoff returns for touchdowns. His career probably isn't where it's at without the kickoff. You're, you're getting a lot of college football players who aren't position-specific, who don't really have a role on offensive defense, but they are special teams guys, and now they're going to be without that. And so the XFL lined up guys five yards apart, punter or kicker. So I don't know if a kicker can kick it. I just saw a punter do it, punts the ball. Once the guy catches the ball, everybody then can start attacking and the blockers can block. One, it, it guarantees a return. Two, I don't know if there's a fair catch rule in that because I know in college football you can fair catch it and just take it to the 25. But at the end of the day, it's going to be a little bit more exciting, uh, a little bit more fast-paced. And, and I think the NFL should adopt it. It has to be something to that. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I would love that. I, I think that the NFL has turned into sort of a it's become a boring play um, because nine out of 10 times, if you return the ball, you're not getting to the 25 yard line. Teams are intentionally kicking it short because they know they can pin you. So rarely do guys get free that now it's almost like, uh oh, he's returning. Oh, no, we're going to get pinned deep where it should be 50-50. It should be, all right, here we go. He might break it. Like, let's, let's get going here. And right now, it's not exciting. Uh, special teams coordinators are taking advantage of NFL rules, and they're, they're kicking it to the two-yard line and getting guys down at the 16. That's not as fun to watch. 
So opening that back up and simultaneously making it a safer play, uh, I think that'd be a great change. I think the NFL should not be too proud to look at the XFL and take some of these innovations. Yeah, and I think it's about safety. You think about the collisions, the the, the big hits, the full speed, a uh, 50-yard head start uh, for some of these guys to then run through somebody. I think that's what they're going to change. Uh, another thing we have to talk about, we all drafted players uh, or teams in the XFL. And just, yep. just a quick update for the people at home. Uh, the D.C. Defenders, who I picked, went, won over the Seattle Sea Dragons, but it was great to see Josh uh, Gordon got, a, got his first touchdown. Uh, you also had the St. Louis Battle Hawks. That was Reggie's team over the San Antonio Brahmas, who actually are coached by Heinz Ward. So that was that was fun to see. It's fun to see a lot of these names pop back up. Uh, you then had the Renegades over the Las Vegas Vipers. So that was my Las Vegas team took an L. And then you had the Houston Roughnecks over the Orlando Guardians. And so that was a great opening weekend. I think I think they got what they wanted out of the play. I think they got what they wanted out of the fans. You saw big hits. Sam, when you look at some of these big hits, I know one fourth and 15, that's another conversation. Instead of the onside kick, which is a what, about 2% uh, conversion rate on onside kicks, they are going with an opportunity. You score, instead of kicking the onside kick, you can go for it from, I don't know what yard line, but fourth and 15, you have a chance. And on one of the plays, the guy got absolutely blown up. Now, it was a shoulder hit. It was a legal hit. He hit him shoulder to body. The receiver did not get a chance to come down with the ball and take two steps and make a football move. Do you think at some point the XFL, Sam, will make that change? Or they're going to leave it as is because that's what fans like? Because, I mean, I, I, I enjoyed it, but also, like, I haven't seen that in so long. I, mm-hmm. I did cringe a little bit watching the highlight. Like, I don't know. Where are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, I, I know the XFL is trying to be like the the more interesting, the more hard hitting product. That's kind of their brand. That's the Rocks brand. But while I don't necessarily advocate for that, I do advocate for the fourth and fifteen thing. The fourth and fifteen thing is fun, and I don't know if people saw the end of the Battle Hawks Brahmas game. So the Brahmas were down by twelve. They scored. They went not for one, not for two. They went for three. They went for a three-point conversion, which is another thing we should talk about. Then instead of onside kicking, they got it on fourth and 15 to keep the ball, and they scored again. Um, What do you think about that, Ron? Not having to onside kick, being able to score 15 points in a row without having to give the ball back. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's the, the three pointer. Like, I mean, it's almost like the all star game, I think, or, or forgot what that was when they had like the four point shot, the money the ball, five, the money ball. You could shoot from like half court, you could get a five pointer, pointer, and then you could, you know, I think it was that shoot around game, and they had the four pointer, the five pointer, and Steph Curry, like guys like Steph Curry, Dame Lillard, like they were killing the four pointers. Um, I, I don't know if I'm a fan of the three point play. Like I do, I'm okay with the two point conversion, keep it normal. And then you can go for it on four for 15. The three point play to me is just adding too much to it, too much to think about. Um, but I get it. Like it, it's, it's something to talk about. It, it's fun. The rock wants it to be fun, fast paced and different. Uh, so I, so I totally get it, but I, I, I would be a little bit weary of too many of those type of plays uh, but I think it's something to look forward to. I think the NFL, they're going to watch this closely. You got a lot of NFL. Uh, you got Kyle Schloter, former Viking. We talked about that. He's on a roster. Uh, you look at Jeff Bidette, you know, former Viking on a roster. So I, I think the NFL is going to watch closely for some of these guys. One, to bring back the training camp. And two, when it's time to look at the CBA and the rules and the NFLPA, how can we make our game more exciting? Because I think some fans have bought that up, like it gets boring and blah blah. And and, and what better way to, to to throw the whole like this whole league is scripted by coming up with some of these new ideas? Because you can't script a three point play. Now I'm not again, I'm not a fan of that one. But you can't script that, and then you can't script 15 straight points. Like if you do, I mean, now the Rock is from Hollywood, so if anything is scripted, I'd say the XFL is scripted because we know of the old wrestling WWE. Uh, when the original like thought process of it, when he hate me was one of the best running backs in the XFL, um, it, it people were worried about that. How much was the WWE going to get into this from a script standpoint? And this team needs to win because the fans like it. And let's look at the let's look at the which team gets the most TV ratings. We need to make sure they're winning because people are going to want to watch them in the championship. I don't think the XFL would do it, but 
We got to move on. We got Cole Keith joining us in the Hang of Ron Johnson segment, former golfer, Tampa Bay Buccaneer tight end, learned a lot from Tom Brady. Has something to say about Tom Brady in, 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 the, in this underwear. Like Tom Brady put a thirst trap out there in his underwear. Cole Keith brings that up because Cole Keith showed up one day in an outfit. You're going to want to hear about this outfit Cole Keith showed up in because I think it's worse than Tom Brady's. It's worse than Tom Brady's outfit. And Coquille just happened to have it in his locker, so he wore it to practice. You got to hear about that coming up next on the Ron Johnson Show. But also remember, which one is it? Four. Sorry. Here we go. Three, two. And also remember, Locked On is a power partner with Care 11. Just visit care11.com backslash Locked On for all the links to every one of our Locked On shows. And we have a word from our sponsors. The football season is over, but basketball season is just getting rolling. And you can go to FanDuel.com and find ways to wager. You can bet on the over-under, the point spread, three-pointers made, points assists, rebounds all together. A lot of different ways to get in the action at FanDuel.com. You get paid instantly. They've got a safe, secure, easy-to-use app. It is the number one sports betting partner of Locked On. FanDuel.com slash Locked On for your no-sweat first bet. Up to $1,000 in bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Uh, take advantage of that at FanDuel.com slash Locked On. Make every moment more an official sports betting partner of the NBA. And now it's time to hang with Ron Johnson. And I got a, a special guest today, current Buccaneer. No, it's not Tom Brady. Sorry, people. I couldn't get Tom Brady. He's, he's busy doing underwear ads right now. Uh, but did get his teammate that I think would wear underwear like Tom Brady. Like I, I've seen this guy do some weird stuff uh, pregame with, for the Gophers. I actually uh, got to go on the road with the Gophers to Indiana and be the sideline reporter. Uh, I, I went to the bowl game as well, and, and I got a chance to meet Keith and his dad. Uh, and it's just an awesome family for one. Uh, a tight end all season that I said was going to be one of the best tight ends in the country from just watching him. And then he gets his chance with the Buccaneers, makes the team. Well, Cole, I want to thank you for joining me on the Ron Johnson Show. First, I got to jump out there and ask, rookie year, how was it compared to college football? Uh, compared to college football, I'd say it's just the best player that I played in the Big Ten um, every year. Uh, that's everyone on the field. So everyone's <laughs> talented. Everyone's athletic. Um, what it really comes down to is knowing what you're doing. Um, with the other, your teammates, like being on the same page, especially offensively. But uh, I mean, everyone's good. Um, it was an interesting conversation because I get asked that all the time is like, how big of a difference is it from college to NFL? And I almost think that uh, high school to Division One FBS is a harder transition than the college to NFL is. Yeah, no, I've heard that before. I mean, yeah, if you think about it, high school, you have a lot of guys sometimes on teams that aren't going to ever see a college football field. Uh, in college, you have a lot of top guys across the country, but there's only 260-some-odd draft picks. There's only 300 possible free agent spots open. Um, so there, there's only, what, 46 spots on a roster plus nine uh, practice squads. So, yeah, so it, it, it becomes a, a smaller pool and a bigger scope when you look at 100 plus players per college 144 colleges so there's a ton of talent out there of guys who just don't ever get this opportunity and you're one of them they got the opportunity you're a, a 0.06 percenter uh which are the number of guys that make it to the nfl and actually get to play a season um which is which is phenomenal and, and every time i think about that i'm like man you know like it, it was a blessing and if I can ever give you any advice, man, always reach out. Because I'm just asking, I, like I had Mel Blunt on yesterday, four-time Super Bowl champion, yep. uh, Pittsburgh Steeler. And I take his wisdom all the time because him and my dad play together. So if there's ever a time, a question, don't hesitate to ask me because if I don't know it, I'm going to ask somebody else. Uh, but, Keith, I want to ask you this one too then. Uh, when you look at coming into that locker room, you know, you had to, everybody that walks into a training camp has to earn their spot on the field. Uh, you're, you're athletic, you're big, you're fast, you're strong, you can block which is a key for tight ends in the NFL, but you can also catch. You, you had some sneaky good catches at Minnesota, some sneaky run after the catches. Um, but how how big was that having Antoine Winfield in that locker room uh, during training camp and through that process? Oh, you know, I went out um, in the summer with Antoine a couple times. Um, just having him and Tyler there, um, I know the level caliber players they are, um, and I think 
staying that extra two years at Minnesota um, just helped me get to where they were at. And so it was just nice seeing a familiar face, you know, um, especially like the first couple of days being in the locker room for OTAs, like not necessarily knowing all the vets and stuff. It was just like kind of comforting to know that, you know, I know is that Antoine or Tyler or something. Um, but, you know, all the guys on my team were just I really lucked out with some good guys, um, like no any vets like Kyle Rudolph, um, Cam Braid, all those guys. So uh, really lucked out in that sense. But having Antoine there was definitely like an extra layer of security for me. Yeah, and you play with Kyle Rudolph, Kyle Rudolph, former Viking, uh, fan favorite in Minnesota. Uh, when you have a guy like Kyle Rudolph in the locker room, what kind of teammate is he? Because you, you didn't get the OTA, Kyle Rudolph. You didn't get the training camp, Kyle Rudolph. You got the in season. I know you're on my team, so I can help you out. I can tell you all my secrets, Kyle Rudolph. Uh, how was that playing with Kyle Rudolph? Dude, it was awesome. He's such a good dude, first and foremost. You know, him and his whole family do so much good work um, outside of football with All True. But, uh, you know, he's just having this being his 12th year or 11th year, something like that, man. I can't count that high. <laughs> but sorry, Kyle, if you hear that. But, uh, you know, just he's like a wealth of knowledge, especially for the tight end position, man. He's seen everything, done everything. So just having him in my corner, too, just helped me out, um, reading defenses, picking up keys. Even like uh, so we're playing the Cowboys and Dexter Lawrence, like he's gone up against him a bunch of times when he was in New York. So just kind of that way, like knowing personnel too, um, it was just a massive, massive boost for me and uh, Kate Ott and the other rookie in the room. Yeah, and when we talk about, we're not going to talk about Tom Brady just yet. We're going to get to Tom Brady, people. Coke played with Tom Brady, one of the greatest quarterbacks. I have a better Tom Brady question for you. Tom Brady uh, joked about the Brady brand underwear. And this was like during the season, he said, hey, if I get 4,000 likes or four, no, 40,000 likes, which is nothing for Tom Brady, especially all the women that want to see him do this. Um, he said, I will recreate this photo shoot in his underwear. Uh, and he I just did, didn't he? Yeah, he just posted the picture, which it, it's it's like for ladies that like him, great. But for me, it, it's not sexy. Like he, he's not ripped up. Like, you know, it's not it's not one of those like M Magic Mike, you know, ch uh, ch Channing Tatum type <laughs> of pictures. Uh, just looks like a dude sitting on his bed just woke up. Uh, but but hats off to Tom Brady for doing it. Uh, but Coquif. I've seen you during pregame warmups for the Gophers. I've seen you do some crazy things with your hair. I've seen you go shirtless. I've seen you guys do all kinds of stuff. Like, do you, is there a Coquife Tom Brady like spoof coming up where Coquife's going to sit in his underwear uh, just to one up Tom Brady? No, man. Uh, <laughs> I did uh, one time where during a walkthrough, um, I was wearing like George says the the Saturday walkthrough, you know, before we get on the plane. And I was yeah. wearing like these like cut off jorts and Tom was just like, what are you doing, Co? Like, why are you wearing those? And I was like, Tom, you know, if you ever get into jorts with Brady brand, like I'll be your first model for it. Just, just call me when that happens. And then Tom said something like, I uh, doesn't want to lose a bunch of money. So <laughs> he's a good oh, dude. Man. Man. Jorts. Why, why, why was that your Saturday outfit of choice? Was it just in the locker or? uh yeah i was like in my locker i think from the day before and they were like these uh they're almost like stretchy they weren't like actually like jean material so oh, yeah, it was yeah. like they were it's there like all the, right the jeggings but then jorts they so were jorts, jorts yeah jeggings, pretty much stretch yeah yeah like i, I know the daisy dukes yeah um, <laughs> um and 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 you know when you look at you know getting to the nfl having a mindset you came from a school with the culture some guys leave college and they can't say like what what was our culture like at our school or what was what were we about what did we stand for and um you know you see the roll the boat when you when you got to tampa bay and you thought about that roll the boat what what did that mantra or that mind to that culture do for you uh through your journey right now in the nfl oh man it's just it's the never quit it's the never quit mantra so you know it's showing up to work every day and doing what i need to do do what's asked of me um, and more, you know, to keep my job. And that's all it was every day. And um, I think that's who I've been um, in my time in Minnesota is just a guy that's consistent, shows up to work every day and does the work he needs to do, um, you know, to be able to do what he does. So um, to me, that's just been my whole life and that's what it's going to continue to be. So just having that background and that work ethic instilled in me in college um, just helped me, just made it another, you know, Made another couple of weeks of training camp, made another couple of weeks of OTAs. You know, it was just don't worry about tomorrow. Just show up today and work as hard as you can. And John Michael Schmidt, he's a guy you play with for a long time. Uh, he's entering the draft this year. 
uh, made it out of the season healthy. Thank goodness. Uh, he is slated to be, I mean, he was, a, I think he came into the senior bowl uh, or shrine game as a second round pick. And now they're putting him as a late first round pick. Uh, when, when you think about John Michael Schmidt, what, what is, what is something about him that's going to set him apart from every other uh, guy in this draft or what made him special at Minnesota? The biggest thing that made him special in Minnesota is that he's just a dog, man. He just loves to get after people. He loves being physical. Um, and there's just not a lot of people in the league like that anymore. You know, like every single play, whether it's pass pro run blocking, like he's trying to hurt physically hurt you, like within the rules of the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's just something. And that's going to be him every single play, every single practice. Um, just like we talked about, you know, with the road boat culture, he's just going to keep doing it every single day. He's going to come back for more. And he's just on top of that. He's just really smart, you know, knows the game of football. Um, Brian Callahan did a great job coaching uh, the O line, you know, um, our run game coordinator, and uh, he did a great job teaching John Michael everything he needs to know. So he's gonna kill it, man. And you have another guy hitting into the draft this year too, Mo Ibram. You blocked for him for a number of years. Uh, again, another kid that went to the Shrine game, show people what he can be. Uh, you look at Evan Huff out of, or, uh, out of Northwestern. So there's a lot of running backs coming out this year. But um, I talked to Kenny Burns. He was on the show. And Kenny Burns mentioned that Mo, his vision, his vision for that middle zone run where he has to scan pretty much tackle to tackle to figure out where his hole is. Uh, what, what makes him unique? Or, or why was he that guy uh, for so many years in Minnesota and a guy that wanted to come back for like a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth year uh, where he possibly could have just tried to enter the draft as a, you know, as a third or fourth year guy and possibly, you know, second, third rounder, but he kept coming back. You know, I just think Mo wanted what was best for him. Um, and between like, you know, the coaches and his family and stuff um, just ended up coming back. But I have to agree with Kenny. Like the first thing that I think of when somebody asks why Mo's a special back is his vision. Um, having blocked for him for three years, um, just seeing some of the cuts that he's make and like just the angles of blocks and just finding the perfect way to get around there, man. I haven't seen even another back um, be like that in regards to vision. And then he's just a grinder too, like we said about JMS, all those guys. Um, he's just, he seeks contact. Um, he's going to hit you. You're not going to hit him. And uh, he's just, he's really special back and a special person, man. So like he gets drafted, um, however he ends up making an NFL team, um, mm -hmm. he's going to stick around a long while because he'll will himself. Like he's one of those guys where it's just going to be hard to cut um, just because of his effort, his toughness, um, and how smart he is. So like even special teams, he's going to kill it on special teams too because he's going to do whatever is asked of him. Yeah, and you, were, you went from a run-heavy school, RPO type of school, uh, scheme offensively, to a team that had the lowest run – per game in the NFL. Like Tom Brady was going to throw the ball whenever he could. He was going to check out of a run if he could because he felt it. Uh, again, the lowest amount of runs in the NFL as a blocking tight end. And, and, and you're a passing tight end, but as a, as a big body tight end, how, how was that mindset for you having to change, realizing that like, hey, this is going to be a pass heavy set or this is uh you know we're only going to run x amount of time so i got to make the best out of it or you know how or was it like hey this is a the, the workload of blocking is a lot less I'm, I'm good with this how was that no i mean i want to be out there as much as possible you know it's uh job security for me to play more and it's more mm -hmm. money in my pocket but uh at the end of the day like whatever the coach's game plan was whatever tom wanted to do you know i'm gonna do it and so if that only means i'm out there for 20 plays a game 15 10 like every single play out there i better be good you know, yeah. it's fewer opportunities, and I feel like I was. Um, but between that and special teams, you know, still get a good amount of snaps. And so, like, if they want to keep me and they want to keep playing me like that, man, I'm do whatever you ask me to do. But I uh, wish we would have ran the ball more. We had success <laughs> earlier in the year. Yeah. Um, you know, it's always helps to be able to run the ball and throw the ball, you know, not one or the other. So uh, um, I think that was a reason there was some changes um, in our organization. But uh, – you know, it is what it is. You just got to keep improving as a whole unit, you know, O-line and tight ends, running backs, being able to run the ball more effectively. So that's a big point this offseason. Yeah, yeah. You're going to get a new offensive coordinator who's probably going to be a little bit more balanced-minded. Uh, there will be no more Tom Brady, maybe, because he's not entering the booth, he said, into 2024. Um, the fact that Tom Brady's not entering the booth until 2024, maybe 2025, uh, because the contract with Fox was open-ended. 
uh it's 300 and what 73 or 337 million dollars or 75 yeah 375 um he can do whatever he wants because they were just waiting for him can you see tom brady coming back because you know him you've seen him you've seen the wheel uh you know we had mel blunt on uh, and he talked about the age and the, the way of this game. Now guys like that can come back and play because they're not taking some of these brutal hits. They're not doing X, Y, and Z. Trent Dilfer just came out with – his statement was a little more ridiculous, uh, but Trent Dilfer said the game is easy because quarterbacks are getting hit. I was like, I don't know if it's easy. I yeah. definitely don't think it's easy. You're not getting landed on, and that's about the only difference. But, you know, Trent Dilfer, I think, was just trying to make the crowd of older players feel good about their yeah. era of play. Um, and so I get it. It's it's one take from a whole speech, and so sometimes those get thrown off. But when you think about Tom Brady in 2023, could you see him reneging again and coming back? Because he's just like, you know what? Like, I'm healthy. Uh, I'm not – I've told Fox I'm not coming to 2024, 2025. Uh, I do want to hang out with my family, but there's nothing really to do. Like, do you, could you see Tom Brady trying to come back? You know, anything could happen. Um, I think he does really just want to spend time with his family and be a father. But, I mean, physically speaking, um, emotionally speaking, like, he could do it. Like, you saw him play this year. You saw him sling the ball, have the most pass attempts in the NFL. Like, he can still play. Um, high, so smart, man. Um, like, the, the drive is there. Like, the emotions, um, the – purpose the will to win is still there in Tom so like if he wanted to um he could but obviously I think at this point um he wants to be a father so um there's nothing stopping him if he wanted to yeah no it's not and I think a lot of teams you look at the Raiders uh you look at the 49ers a lot of teams are willing to go one year with him just to try to catch lightning in a bottle because if you look at the 49ers they would take him for a year why because that gives them time to get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo get uh, Trey Lance and Brock Purdy healthy and then you have a guy like Tom Brady can come in with that offense that doesn't have to run is not asked to do a ton but dump it off to Debo Samuels and be smart enough to not throw an interception and I think that is Tom Brady but again who knows if 20 million dollars is worth it to him at this point because he's made 333 million dollars in his career so I don't think he's worried about his next check no, um, and, so, and if he wants his next check, he'll just start broadcasting with Fox true. and make even more money. $37.5 million a year for 10 years. Yes, that is crazy. <laughs> Hard to say no. So, Coquif, when you look at P.J. Fleck, man, what did, what did P.J. Fleck uh, kind of mean to you, you know, when you look at, you know, recruiting you, you look at, you know, your your family being a part of go for football, uh, go for football being a real family like being on the road there's some quirky stuff like I'm not gonna lie like I, I went on the road with you guys it's quirky there's a lot of stuff but at the end of the day it works and it gets guys yeah. to where they need to be and so what what is what does PJ Fleck mean to you 100% um me and PJ have a really good relationship he didn't recruit me um I was a recruiting class uh the year before he got in oh, yeah. so uh going through that transition of uh coaches with them was interesting, but, you know, I owe a lot to PJ um, on the field and off the field. Um, but I would say the biggest thing is he does everything the right way. Um, how he is portrayed, portrays himself in the media is how he is all the time. Um, and there's a lot of things he does, um, you know, in his culture that may seem quirky or weird, but like when you look at, so I take like sports, psych, like coaching psychology courses and, you know, I was taking that at Minnesota, and I'm like, huh, so that's why PJ does this. Like, everything was kind of lining up. Um, you know, he's such a good football mind. Like, I don't think he gets enough credit for that. Um, mm -hmm. I think he knows situational football really well, um, and I think he's a really great coach, man. Like, there's still people at Tampa um, that were around when he was the wide receivers coach at Tampa Bay that said, like, he was probably the best receivers coach they've seen um, in their time at Tampa. And I think that speaks to uh, who PJ is, how good of a coach he is, and just the drive he has. Um, so uh, he's he's great, man. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely agree with that. Because when you think about um, PJ Fleck, you know, I've had a lot of time around him. Uh, we do the PJ Fleck show every day for the last, I don't know, what, seven years. So I've, I've gotten to know him a lot. 
um, you know, just being on the road with you guys every once in a while and being able to sit down and talk to him and Heather and just shoot the breeze. I mean, he's a he when he takes that armor off and you know about that, we're going to have Rachel uh, Bibow join us at the end of the season because she's going to kind of do a once the season's over, what your players be doing, which you're well aware of her techniques and her yeah. tactics and thoughts. Um, and so when PJ is able to take that armor off and not really put on for a camera, not really like you can really truly see who he is. Um, especially when there's trust, because he knows anything we talk about. I'm not putting it out on Twitter. I'm not going to yep. talk about it on TV. And I never do. Why? Because I don't need to. Uh, I, I've gotten more from being closer to PJ than I have from just tweeting about, oh, a player's going to do this. Oh, they're getting T-shirts this week for the bowl game and all that. Yeah. And I'm not Adam Schefter. I don't ever want to be. I don't need to be. I like players being able to tell me stuff secretly and um, not having to do it. Because Clay Patterson, you know, I, I, you and I and Clay Patterson, we talked after the bowl game. And everything yep. Clay Patterson told me stuck with me. Like, I, I know his thoughts on the Gophers offense. I knew his thoughts on, you know, X, Y, and Z and, and player and this. And that's between me and Clay Patterson. And that and that's yeah, where I'm understand. And, and, and you know that. I mean, we sit out there and talk. So yeah, um, when, when you look at one more before we get to the daily three, or sorry, two more before we get to the daily three, when you look at uh, Tom Brady and Tanner Morgan, you know, Tanner Morgan is a really smart quarterback. Like he's a guy that can turn around and be a coach next year for a team and be a quarterback's coach because he's so smart. I had a chance to interview him. Uh, and he and I, you know, had a lot of time together before the interview, after the interview. And he's just a really smart kid. Um, a lot of bad breaks with injuries, but a really smart kid. When you when you look at Tanner Morgan and Tom Brady mentally, uh, what were some of the comparisons you saw between the two? Dang, I would just say uh, both of the knowledge of the game. Um, being able to read a defense, read keys. Um, I would say with uh, Tom mentally, probably, uh, I mean, he's, he's Tom Brady. Like, he's yeah. a little higher than Tanner, but Tanner's yeah. love for the game, I would say equal to that or, you know, I would say equal to Tom Brady um, just in the fact that Tanner could just sit there and watch film all day. Right, like Tanner just loves football more than anything else, and uh, it it shows. It shows, and well, currently what he's doing right now, you know, he killed it at the Shrine Bowl, yep. um, getting all these invites. Um, and I think after not playing for half the year, I think that just kind of speaks to who Tanner is. Yeah, yeah. And when you look at uh, Tom Brady, when you think about Tom Brady, you think about this offense with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And again, when you, when you talk about having a Hall of Fame. Uh, teammate like that and, and everything he's been through seven Super Bowls I mean that's unheard of seven Super Bowls do you ever think there will be another quarterback that gets seven Super Bowls you know maybe Patrick Mahomes um, you know he stays healthy and you know the Chiefs keep some key pieces around him and Andy Reid but man like that's just it's incredible like I think I just was reading a stat this morning and it was like Tom Brady reached the AFC or NFC championship like 70% of the time um, in his career. And that's like higher than the average uh, NFL QB percentage, com completion percentage, so like 68%. So he's more <laughs> likely to go to a championship game than an NFL quarterback is likely to complete a pass. I saw, wow. so I don't know if that's true or not, but I saw that and I was like, it checks out, man. He's just, it's just, it's hard, like just being his teammate. Um, just being around that greatness, you know, I mean, I, he's been in the NFL all, for almost as long as I've been alive and producing, obviously, winning championships. So it's like anything he says, like you shut up and you listen and it's like we're going to do it this way and do it that way. And um, it's like indescribable. I've never been around a presence of a leader like that that just has like so much respect of the entire locker room. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's no, always yeah. like in the locker room, there's always someone like – complaining about something or I should be doing this or we should be doing that. It was like, there's, there like, wasn't that um, specifically in regards to Tom, like he, whatever he, he said, like everyone was on board. And when you think about, uh, and you're right, like when you think about that and for the, for the FanDuel sports book fans out there, this, the show is powered by FanDuel. Um, Coquif just gave you guys a great prop bet. I don't know if FanDuel will ever take it, but if you ever want to bet with your friends, is there ever be a quarterback that will have a better completion percentage in their career than Tom Brady has getting to the AFC? It's going to take a while to pay out. I don't know if you ever just can cash your ticket out, but that's actually a good one. I don't know if that'll ever come up. Well, can a quarterback in a season have a better season than Tom Brady's AFC? And, it, and I think that does hold true because he's like 20-something seasons. Um, two more before we get out of here, before we get to daily three. 
Tom Brady's age and your age. When you walk into that locker room, did it feel like, a, like, hey, this is my teammate? Or did he have more of like a coach presence because he is in his 40s? I mean, he's 43, 44, if not, what, 45, I think. You know, yeah, you're 22, 23. So, I mean, that's a 20. You, you could be a son. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm 25. He's 45. So I could still be a son. But, I mean, <laughs> like, you know, in the locker room when we weren't talking about football or, like, on the practice field, um, you know, he's, he's joking around and stuff. He'd always say, what's up, you know, ask you stuff. And, you know, he'd give guys like joke, joke around at guys and stuff and make fun of them. So he, it was definitely a teammate, um, when he needed to be. So, yeah, no, he reminds me of, honestly, he reminds me a little bit of Kirk Cousins, like getting a new coach. Cause when he got to Tampa, it seemed like he loosened up. Like he started drinking avocado tequila, like in the public, <laughs> uh, you know, start hanging out, having fun with Gronk and, you know, start yeah. doing all the jokes, you know, for the camera and social media. Uh, it just seemed like under Belichick, he didn't want to be that guy, uh, which they still won. So again, there's no right way to coach. Like for people that no. think there's no right way to coach. Every coach has their way of doing it. Belichick did it his way and he won. Uh, you know, Bruce Arians does it his way. You know, every Andy Reid does it his Everybody has their own way of doing stuff. Um, so, you know, I think that's the cool thing about it. Uh, one more before we get to the Daily Three. When you think about this season and, you know, and what it could have been, what it was, uh, and then you look at, you know, your next steps um, and you can take the whole season. Kind of what's, what's your off-season mindset now getting ready for next year? Oh, man, it's just getting my body prepared. Um, I have an idea of what the season is now, how long it is, how grueling it can be. Um, and so now I have a really good idea of where I need my body to be at uh, by the time fall camp rolls around it. Just put myself in the best position to be on the 53 man again. So um, just working out, man, I mean, it's my job now. Yeah. So just investing time, money, and um, effort into my body. Um, just making sure it's as good as it can be, um, pain-free, healthy, um, fast, strong, you know, all the above. So it's just the, that's the main focus um, until we get back to fall camp. And coming up next, we got the Daily Three. That's myself, Co-Keith, and Sam Ekstrom is going to join the show. We're going to ask three questions, three minutes each, fast pace. But remember, you can now find Locked On Sports Minnesota on Amazon Fire and Roku. Just download the Locked On Sports Minnesota app to get all of your favorite shows. Just go right to your TV, search apps, hit in Locked In Sports Minnesota. You'll find all the shows. You can see Co-Keith's beautiful face. You can check it out, but please make sure you do that. And also remember, this is powered by FanDuel Sportsbook, and we got a word from our sponsors. Well, it's the end of the world as we know it. Yes, the blizzard that's going to end us is coming. We are going to be snowed in. We are not going to be able to leave our homes. That's what the weather people are telling us. So hopefully you're stocked up on food. Hopefully you're stocked up on delicious treats, and that includes Built Bar. If you're going to be sitting inside eating for the next four days, probably best you balance that out. Put some some good tasting food in your body, but also food that fuels you, food that's good for you, and that'd be Built Bar. Built Bar has 100% real chocolate. There's the, the tasty part, but they've also got 17 grams of protein. There's the healthy part. Only 130 calories, only 4 grams of sugar, and the flavors they have, folks, we tell you every time, they are, fan, uh, they are fantastic. Peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, churro, brownie batter. Uh, you better go out today. And you better stock up. You can go to Walmart in person, go to the pharmacy section, get the four bar box, Sam's Club, run in there as well, 13 bar box. Uh, get them in person, get them today. Built bars, stock up for the storm. Three questions, three minutes each. Take it away, Sam. All right, Ron, you might have this on the bookshelf behind you, but Co, I, I wanted to know your answer. What did you do with the first touchdown ball that you caught in the NFL? So I got that sitting in my living room up by my TV. Um, I was going to have Tom sign it. Didn't get that done. That's a big, big mess up on my part, but it got sitting in the living room. You got time. You'll, you'll see him, I'm pretty sure, at some point. Because the, the best one, though, is one of your teammates. Uh, I forgot his name, but he had Tom sign, like, his last pass as a Patriot. Was an interception? Yeah, Logan like Ryan. Logan yes. Ryan's last oh. – Tom Brady's last pass as a Patriot interception to Logan, and he had him sign it. That was, that that was, was cruel. That Tom was, was a good sport, ever. though. Tom, <laughs> Tom was a good sport. He posted it and signed it. Because if I were him, I'd be like, I would just go to the Patriots for 10 days and just – Ask Belichick, let me throw one more pass to somebody just to say, just, Logan just Ryan, screw you. Yeah, like your ball is worthless now. 
Uh, yeah, see, I mean, yeah, mine's behind me on the shelf. Um, first game of my career, first game ever for the NFL season that year in 2002 against the uh, Panthers. Wasn't supposed to be my touchdown. Uh, I was supposed to go to, I think, Brandon Stokely. Uh, but the other receiver, Travis Taylor, got hurt. So Brandon Stokely had to go to Travis's spot. And then I had to go in the slot versus being the X. And uh, then our fourth receiver came in and he became the X. And so thank God I got to go into the slot um, and be the Y, which Cole knows that as a tight end receiver. So I got to be the Y in the in the route. And it was basically sluggo seam. And it was my seam was wide open up the up the up the seam. And the safety Dion Grant was a little bit late. And Chris Redman stuck it. It was like in the back of the end zone. My very first touchdown, I had to deal with the NFL challenge rules. That pissed me off a little bit too. But whatever. They challenged it, looked it up. I got dig it two feet in, touchdown, and then, yeah, I got the ball. But I didn't get the ball at first, so I didn't realize I was supposed to keep the ball. I think I spiked it and did like a celebration dance. And thank God the quarterback realized, like, hey, dude, this is your first touchdown. You might want this ball. And he bought it over yeah. to me, so. Yeah, I, I had no idea about keeping balls or anything like that. I, I tell people all the time, like, I wasn't a huge NFL, like, follower in college, like, because my dad had started getting signs of CTE. So, honestly, my senior year, and my first two years in the NFL, I was not really in football. I was more worried about my pops. And so I wasn't really big on all that little stuff like that. But it definitely I do have the ball, though. So I, I won't forget that one. What you got next, Sam? Yeah, um, Co, you played 276 special team snaps last year. I'm curious Whoa. what preparation goes into playing on all those different special teams units during the course of the week. I would definitely say that was the biggest le learning curve for me this past year um, because I didn't. I was on like punt shield in Minnesota, and that was kind of it in field goal. So uh, learning kickoff, learning um, punt return and punt. Like, cause NFL punts a lot different than college punt. Um, that was probably the steepest learning curve for me. So it was a lot of going in special team coordinators uh, office every week, you know, at the beginning of the week to watch some clips with him, get ready for the week. And then also just, that was probably the most film I would grind was uh, like the other team's special teams clips, especially their punt return. You know, you don't want to get a pump block. So uh, it was a lot of prep for me in that way. Cause that was something new I had to learn. Yeah, for me, I think it is a lot of prep. Uh, I was the same way my rookie year. We had 19 rookies make the team. We had 12 draft picks that year because the Ravens had went all in to win a Super Bowl in 2000. So coming up in my year, 2002, they didn't have they, – they had to let go of everybody. Goose, Sarah Goosa, uh, Pete Bowyer did stay for another year. Uh, Michael McCrary stayed for another year. Um, I forgot Sam Adams was kind of there, but hurt. And so they had to literally revamp. Like we drafted Bart Scott, Ed Reed, Terry Jones, myself. Like they had to basically re re reload and get all guys back in. Cause all the vets, Shannon Sharp, all those guys, they, they couldn't afford to keep them anymore. Trent Dilfer. And so, uh, I had to do all the special teams. So yeah, I was, I was kickoff, kickoff return, punt, pump block, punt return. Uh, but I actually loved it. I love pump block. And we were, I think, Bart Scott, Ed Reed that year. Ed Reed had like six pump blocks. Uh, one of, and I think I have that ball back there. Either him or Bart's block one, and I returned it for a touchdown. Um, but I actually loved that. So when I realized pump block was that fun, that's when I fell in love with special teams because I'm like, man, we're moving around. We're like we were one of those teams that we move around and we we send the gunner and then we back out the two ends. And me and Reed were the ends, and so we would. I mean, it was it was fun. So yeah, it's definitely a lot of prep though because you got to know when to trigger, when not to go. Reed could go whenever he wanted so we actually had to watch that like if we saw there was a weak edge we're like reed's gonna go so we gotta you gotta be ready for a block and you know you gotta pick up his guy if he if he can't get the block. i mean it was a lot of what to win it with gary's honor uh former vikings uh special teams coordinator that followed brian billick to the baltimore ravens so uh yeah it's a lot of prep goes into that what's the next more than now? people think that's for sure way more than people think uh field goal not so much but you know no that about you, the only you, one. I'm about to say you guys didn't have any field goal issues. I know that was a Cowboys. Bucks didn't have any field goal issues this year, did they? Your kicker? Uh, I think they might have gotten one blocked, but Ryan okay. Suckup was really good this year. Okay, yeah, I'm about to say you guys were like the Cowboys. Kickers were pretty good. Mauer had a had a tough go about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that got that against. Oh the yeah, Bucks. that was crazy. That was nuts. That was I'd never seen that was, before in my life. Oh yeah, that was against you guys, wasn't it? That was in the playoff game. You missed yeah, so, many yeah I was going to say, when, when he kept missing field goals or extra points, what were you – like, what was that like? Like, watching the guy just melt down. Oh, we're game. just – we're just like, this is just saving time for time to <laughs> make a comeback. Like, I don't care how much – point, how many points we were down. Like, it's like – unless there's – like, 
uh, two minutes on the clock, we're down by four scores. Like, I'd still think we'd win just because I think Tom Brady would just pull something out of the hat. But yeah, so every time he missed, you guys are like, oh, that that puts us one yep, step. We're closer. good. We're like, we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> was he in the now? Was he in the Pro Bowl, Sam? Was he the one that missed the kick in the Pro Bowl too? M- Meyer? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I didn't watch the Pro Bowl. Be okay, there you. was a kicker that kicked and missed and went wide left, and and uh, RG three was like, "Is that Maurer or Maurer?" And you can just hear uh, Marcus Spears in the background say, "Hey man, chill out. Too soon. Way too soon." He had <laughs> so, a good year. He had a good he year up until up that, that point. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, last next? question for you, Co. Who's someone that took you under their wing when you showed up? It's the it's OTAs. My dog is barking. Who took you under their wing and, and showed you the ropes as a rookie? Uh, definitely like Cam Brate, um, another tight end there. That was his ninth year this past year, um, all with the Bucks. Um, definitely during OTAs, you know, just kind of made me familiar with the area, the facility, um, Tampa Bay is a city. Um, he was a big one. And then Kyle Rudolph, obviously, when he got there in fall camp, um, really just helped me out. Um, you know, watching film helped me understand just how to play in the league and how to do it for a long time. So those two guys specifically. Yeah, I'd say for me it was uh it was Chris Redman, our quarterback, him and Brandon Stokely and Todd Heap. Uh those are kind of my offensive guys I hung out with. Like I just as we we just moved, so I looked at some old pictures. I know Coquif is all about the digital picture world now, but we actually had physical pictures that had to be developed, and you didn't even know what they were going to look like until you got the film back. Uh, so that was always a treat to like drop off your film, and you're like, you have no idea if it was a good picture. And now kids can look. Oh, delete that. Let's take it again. You just like take this picture. Hopefully it's great. You get it. Like oh, it sucks. I didn't realize your eyes were closed or you got red eyes. Uh, but those guys, those three guys, kind of we were our group because one of the pictures at our Halloween party. Uh, we all went together. I don't even, I can't remember what our costumes were, but uh, we all went together. I think I was like brother man from the fifth floor from Martin's show. And I don't know what the other three guys were, uh, but we we definitely uh, were there. And then Ray Lewis, like Ed Reed and me and Ray Lewis lockers were next to each other. And so because Reed and Lewis were so close, me and Reed were rookies. And so I just kind of got bought into the fold of like, hey, here's what you do. Here's what you don't do. Uh, here's what I learned from like hearing Ray Lewis talk about the struggles he had. <laughs> Uh, we all know about his issues off the field. And then th- I got there after the fact. So he had been a changed person and saw life can clearly like you could be out of the league in a minute if you make this mistake. And so to hear him talk about that, I think that was huge for me to realize like one mistake. I don't care if you make $50 million, one mistake and it's gone and you're in jail. Um, and that was huge. Like that was huge to hear that as a rookie, because I think that's what changed me from wanting to get in fights. Uh, wanting to be around crowds that I shouldn't be around. Like, it completely changed that mindset for me at a young age. Uh, so I definitely appreciate that. Uh, Cole, before we get out of here, man, I, I, I've been doing something lately where I let the guests uh, kind of pin a letter to themselves. Like, I don't know if you've seen Back to the Future uh, with Michael J. Fox and, uh, you know, Biff goes back to the future and he gives himself the almanac. You know, here's the almanac. Bet these bets. You'll be, a, you know, you'll be rich. And then there's another movie, I think, Hot Tub Time Machine. I can't believe I watched that, but I did. Uh, where the guy goes back into the future and tells himself about Google uh, and yep. to buy Google. So if you could go back into the future, you can get into a hot tub uh, and, and go back in time and tell yourself or give yourself just some 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 word of advice. What would that be? Dang, man, I don't know if I'd change anything. Maybe uh, maybe some stock investing advice. I don't know. <laughs> but in regards to football, man, just uh, just keep being yourself because mm-hmm. that's that's what ultimately got me here um be me um and that's good enough but you got to bring it every day and that's the biggest thing we talked about today man is is this the consistency of it is just being consistent every single day in your training and just who you are as a man and a person um is the biggest thing yeah man i want to appreciate you for joining me on the ron johnson show uh if you want to get more about coquif please follow him on twitter that's coquif on Twitter. It's also cool, man. You should see his dad. So when you guys get a chance, go to his Twitter, find his dad, like all the stuff he does for t- tailgating all through his gopher career. Looks like he's going to start doing it as a buck as well. So his dad, I mean, I remember we did the gopher pregame show every morning and I would hear like, oh, you know, we're, we're going to have breakfast sandwiches. And I would always try to get the camera crew to go grab one or get a shot of him. Uh, I think we got on our show one time uh, tailgating and uh, it's it's the greatest. Like he's out there early, ready to go. Oh, yeah. Like he really loved it at the bowl game. Same thing. They, I went to the the Coquif's dad breakfast in Arizona. Uh, he invited me out. Like, hey man, come to my come to my breakfast tailgate. And I think it was uh, Marley 
uh, the, the basketball player has a bar in Arizona. And I think we did it there like Marley's. And so it was just, it's just one of those cool things. So make sure you check that out, people. Uh, but remember, if you want endless Vikings talk, make sure you subscribe to the Locked On Sports Minnesota YouTube channel where you can find all of our videos, all of our shows, instant podcasts after every game, and the Vikings press conference delivering all the biggest news. Like our videos and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I want to thank you and have a great day.